I was not tagged to do this video, but um, one of my very good Instagram friends made this video and today I am bringing you the Quickfire book tag. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week. And then movie reviews or book to movie content here at the weekend. Um, all of my social links are in the description box below, as well as my blog and my Goodreads so you can keep up with my reading or watching in between times. Um, I will leave my tag playlist linked up here as well because I enjoy making a tag and it's been a little while since I made one um, but I saw her do this tag um, I will leave her channel linked up here down here as well as the questions and the original video um, in the description box for you but this is the quickfire tag so we're going to go quickfire okay ebook or physical book neither audiobook if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that I am a an audiobook girl but Given my recent history, if you made me pick between just those two, I'd probably go physical book as it stands right now. Ask me next month, I might have a different answer. Um, paperback or hardcover? This is difficult because um, reading in the UK is so much more choice when it comes to paperbacks, whereas here it's basically all hardback and then hardbacks can be so beautiful but they're so heavy to carry around. They don't fit in all of my handbags. Uh, let's go paperback. Um, online or in-store book shopping? Uh, that's also tricky. Because I listen to so many audiobooks, I have to buy those online. I'm not gonna be buying any CDs because you can't speed CDs up. But then there's something about going into a bookstore, especially a secondhand bookstore, and seeing what you find and that new book smell uh, in store. Trilogies or series? I think series because when you're reading a trilogy, you know it's coming to an end at the end of those three. I think the only kind of trilogies I've read have been like Young Adult, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, um, I'm trying to think of another trilogy that I've read. I'm sure I've read another trilogy. You know, you've seen my videos. What trilogies have I read? Um, but yeah, series like the Shopaholic series or the I Heart series. Okay, heroes or villains? Given the fact that I've been reading some more thrillers recently, I really love a nice, intriguing villain. When it comes to Disney movies, obviously it's all about the heroes. When it comes to Avengers movies, it's all about the heroes. But actually, when you're reading, sometimes those villains can be so much more interesting. So I'm going to go with a villain. Who knew? Who saw that one coming? Okay, a book you want everyone to read. This is going to come as no surprise. Always going on about this book. Have loads of videos talking about this book. Leave them linked up above. Wonder by RJ Palacio. No matter what age you are, you can read this. There's a picture book version so we can read it right from, you know, the very beginning. Um, this is the like deluxe collection, but I mean, the tagline says it all. Why blend in when you were born to stand out? You know, I've read this book over and over again. I haven't read it for a little while. I feel like I'm due a reread. I also need to watch the film again because I saw it in the cinemas and then never watched it again. What happened there? Um, recommend an underrated book or series. I was thinking about this one and um, I think I'm going to go with the new series from Holly Smell, which is the Valentine series. There are two books in this series now. There's uh, This is the second book in the series, Far From Perfect. She is known for her Geek Girl series, and I have a whole video talking about the wonder of the Geek Girl series, which I will leave linked up above. But I feel like she's come out with this new series. This is where we're going next. And I've not heard a lot of people talking about it, whereas when Geek Girl first came out, everybody was talking about it. It was amazing. I had the full set in my classroom, but this series, the things that they do because they are a like Hollywood family are so outrageous. It's so fun to read. Um, so there we go, underrated because I've not heard many people talking about it. Um, what was the last book you bought? I recently did my book of the month club 
order which i will have coming for you soon in a book haul but if you want a sneak preview of one of the books that i bought you will need to check out my bout of books reading vlog um because i talk about it there so book haul coming up or you can check out that video because that was that one is already up i will leave it linked up above um weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark um i've definitely used just things that come to hand as a bookmark I have a whole collection of bookmarks but you know when you are out and about and you find yourself buying a book unexpectedly you can use the receipt that you got if you got a receipt um, I have used my phone as a bookmark before a uh, coffee stirrer sachet of sugar boarding pass that's quite a common one though using a boarding pass not that I have a paper boarding pass anymore it's always on my phone um, I think I've used my tripod, my little tripod, as a bookmark before as well when I've been reading something. Um, I mean, generally, I've got something more interesting to hand, like a receipt or, um, yeah, sugar packet. <laughs> That's probably an interesting one. I should just, you know, have a little collection, a little, like, Ziploc bag of bookmarks that always go in my handbag. And then if I'm caught unexpectedly with a new book that requires a bookmark, I'll have one. Um, used books, yes or no? Yes, I like a used book and sometimes I will have bought the book as an audiobook or bought the book as an ebook, so the author's still getting those royalties. But then I want a physical copy and maybe it's something that my library doesn't carry because it's a UK edition or it's something that's like now out of print or they don't have a print copy, they only have the ebook copy. Um, and also, library books I use books too and you know I always have a massive stack of those um top three favorite genres obviously we're going rom-com whether that's adult or young adult rom-com uh then I'm gonna go with a memoir um specifically a memoir on audiobook I love a memoir on audiobook although I do find myself sometimes then buying the physical book so I can see the pictures or visiting the physical book in a bookstore or a library so I can see the physical pictures um, and then after that I would probably say uh, like a psychological domestic thriller like C.L. Taylor, like Louise Candlish, um, I have whole playlists of those ones and the direction that Lisa Jewell has gone, obviously she's gone from writing rom-coms to writing thrillers but she's still got those intriguing female characters in there and those like family relationships in there so that would be probably my third one what about you like do you, do you agree with my top three what are your top three genres would you would you label them rom-com would you label them something else what do what do you like to read let me know in the comments um, borrow or buy I do way more borrowing than I do buying so I guess we'll go with borrow but that doesn't mean that I don't buy as well it's fine it's like a try before you buy with the library though isn't it you borrow it from the library and then you decide whether you want it or not that's what happened with my goodnight stories for rebel girls books borrowed the first one from the library then bought myself a copy so I could go back to it um, characters or plot characters all the way I love a character driven novel if I can't connect with the characters whether I like them or whether I like to hate them find them intriguing then I'm not going to connect with the book um I think that's one of the reasons that I had trouble with the last Marion Keys novel there was it was very 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 character driven but I didn't find myself warming to the characters or finding them intriguing and there was just too many to keep track of the same with Paula Hawkins into the water didn't like the characters couldn't keep track of who they were where are we now? Who's this now? So I didn't like the book. Um, long or short books? Short books? <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, I have some trouble with some long books. Although, yeah, February ended up reading a ton of long books, including Grown Ups by Marion Keys. Um, long or short chapters? Oh, 100% short chapters. I love a book with short chapters. Lisa Jewell does short chapters so well. And somebody said over on Instagram today, it's like each chapter has a mini cliffhanger. And, you know, she does that on purpose. Also, page two has amazing short chapters. Sometimes they're just literally like three or four pages long and you're like, oh, I've only got another chapter. I'll just do another chapter. It does that one more chapter thing. But then because they're short chapters, before you know it, you're at the end of the book. Um, 
Name the first three books you can think of. Well, here I have Wonder. I just talked about Paige Toon, so One Perfect Summer. And then I also just talked about Lisa Jewell, so then she was gone. Um, books that made you laugh or cry. I just filmed a video about five audiobooks, which will already be up. And I talk about the fact that those books made me laugh and cry. Um, so go and check out that video uh, because, yeah. I mean, if a book doesn't make me do one of those things, I'm not so much of a fan. I like to be able to laugh or to be able to cry at a book. Page Toon makes me do both every time. Lindsay Kelp makes me laugh every time. Um, Danny Atkins makes me cry every time. What's she do to me? Seriously. Um, our world or fictional worlds. I'm a lazy reader, our world all the way. I like to read about people who are like my age, who are um, living in somewhere that I've been to. <laughs> I'm such a lazy reader when it comes to that. But you know, I've identified that and I, I don't try and read sci-fi and I don't try and read fantasy and I, I don't mind dystopian because it's kind of in our world as well. So uh, I've identified that and that cuts down the pool of books that I have to choose from and that's okay. Um, audiobooks, yes or no? Yes, 100%. Whole playlist talking about my love of audiobooks. If you've ever watched any of my wrap ups, you will know they're always audiobook heavy, 100%. Do you ever judge a book by its cover? Yes, I found some of the most like some of my favorite books thanks to the thanks to the fact that the cover made me pick them up in the bookstore or the cover made me like it on Instagram and then go and get it from my library or the cover made me it popped up on Twitter and then I ordered it on audiobook probably 100% I judge a book by its cover uh book to movie or book to tv adaptation you know I love talking about book to movie adaptations I have a whole playlist of my book versus movie videos um I think that um the Becky Albertalli books have been done really, really well as movies. I was really pleased with the way they made Love, Simon. And then I absolutely loved the series, Love, Victor. Leave those videos linked here or here. Check both, because I might have run out of links up here already. Um, yes. And then, yeah, just, I, there's been some really solid adaptations. I do find, I think when they do, a YA novel adaptation, it tends to be slightly better than an adult novel adaptation. And then there's been the recent TV series of um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, the story of the Golden State Killer. And that TV show went to different places than the book did. And yeah, it was, each episode was like over an hour long. So actually the TV show was about the same length as the book. So they did a good job. They did a good job. I, I have a whole book versus TV show of that one. And then finally, series or standalone? Um, controversially, I think, I think series because then when you go into the second book in a series, you've got that like instant familiarity, that feeling that you get, that kind of like warm and fuzzy. I know these characters, I know this setting, I've got history with this main character here. You feel like you're going back to friends, you feel like you're going back to a familiar world. Um, and so I do love series. I hate waiting for the next book if a series get le gets left with a cliffhanger, but generally with a rom-com, you don't have a cliffhanger, you have a kind of like mini tied up ending even if you know that there's more coming in that series like even with the i heart series when you know there's more coming you still get a satisfying ending and you still get kind of a resolution for some of the characters um so yes there you have it i am not going to tag anyone if you would like to do this then go ahead and let me know. Let me know in the comments so I can come and watch it. Um, thank you to uh, Sarah for making this video, even though you didn't tag me. Um, I enjoyed thinking about my reading and even though it's quick fire, I'm sorry we're at 15 minutes. It's fine. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what your answers to some of these questions would have been in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, but tell me why. Um, 
I will be back with another video very soon. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with another video very soon.